Good morning creators and welcome to another UFN tutorial. This is episode 5 of the Landscape Paint Maestro series. If you're just now joining us, please check out the full series playlist linked below. Um, but in this tutorial, we're going to discuss the grass materials. If you look at my viewport, you'll see that I have grass that is waving in the wind and that the further I go away, it actually coals, but it coals very gracefully. And if I get close to the close to the grass with my camera, um, it goes underneath the terrain and kind of fades out. So that's what we're going to accomplish today. Some of these nice effects. Also the random colors as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first we're going to create a new material. I'm going to call this M underscore um, foliage tutorial. Double click to open that up. Now, the first thing you need to make sure to do is we set our usage flags. Um, so if you scroll down, you can set your usage flags here. Um, a lot of people want to just automatically set usage flags. I don't generally advise doing that because if you, ask, if you accidentally apply it, then it just creates more usage flags. What all we really need to do is set instances. So use with instance static meshes, turn that on, and that for, therefore it will actually work on the grass particles, all right? Um, now we need to search for, uh, it, per instance, random. And so this is going to be a random zero to one value. That's going to let us change the colors. So I'm going to place an alert node, put that into the alpha, and I'm going to create two color parameters that I can adjust. So I'm going to call this one uh, grass color one. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And we're going to name this one grass color two. And I'll set that to two colors. And so it will lerp between these two. Do something a little bit more dramatic. All right. So there will be a random value between these two when I put this into the base color. I'm going to go ahead and set that up in my, um, my grass here. So instead of using the, this one, we're going to use foliage tutorial, all right? So now you should see, not as graceful as my material, not yet, but you have random colors. They're kind of just sticking up, kind of ugly. Um, but I mean, we got random colors. So what's next? What do we want to do next? Um, I want to tackle... Um, I want to tackle the cold distance. Now there are two parts of this. I want to have a camera cold distance. When you're too close to it, I want it to go away. Uh, I also want to have a cold distance from far away. When these leave, I don't want them to pop out of existence. I want them to gracefully leave. So we're going to go ahead and deal with that. So per instance, fade amount is going to be your cold distance um, when you get out of render distance. And if I just go ahead and put that into our opacity mask, which we need to set this to masked, this is not going to do anything because it's just turning it on and off as it already is. So what I want to turn on is dither opacity mask. This will this way it'll just like turn off individual pixels on your screen rather than the entire mesh. So you'll notice that it fades in pretty nicely. The reason why we're using um, a mask rather than translucent is because mask is much cheaper than translucent materials. And we don't really need this to be translucent. So you'll notice it's fading pretty nicely. That's, that's cool. Uh, and this is actually based on um, your cold distance in the landscape um, grass layer. So you'll see I have these values set to 400 and 2000. I can set it to 5000 as the max and the gradient is really, really small. You can barely see it, but it's a very, very small amount. Um, so make sure that you have these set because that's how your gradient is built um, between these two values. All right, um, I wanna add the camera fade. So what are we going to do for that? 
Well, let's get our camera position vector. And then the thing is, we don't actually get to use object position. Um, for whatever reason, it just gets like, I think one of the landscape proxy positions rather than the mesh itself. Um, so we have to do some material math to get that um, position. So we'll just get zero, zero, zero. We want the origin or pivot point of the mesh. And we're gonna get a transform position node. So we're gonna transform it from, oh, look at that, instance and particle space. And we're gonna translate it to world space. And now we can get a distance. All right. Um, first thing I want to do is subtract. And this will be, I'll call this um, camera min distance. Actually, I could just inverse slurp this even better. Inverse slurp, and so we'll have camera min distance and we'll also have camera max distance. Max distance. And so this is based off of how far away from the camera you want this to be visible. Now, let me just go ahead and put this into our opacity mask, replace the fade amount. And we're going to look at this. Give it a second. All right. Um, let me increase the max distance to a tile, so 512. Uh, you'll notice very, very faintly when the camera's close, it starts to fade out. Let me increase the min distance. And then you'll see, oh yeah, it's fading out at the min and then to the max. And that's how you can create that camera gradient, which is pretty useful. Now we want to, I think, max this or min this. Are we going to min or max this? Let's see what happens when we max it. Yeah, max is not what you want. You want a minute. Because you want the least of both. a second. So now it actually fades out on the edges and it fades out in the middle. So you have this donut mask basically, um, or a torus if you're a professional. Um, it's actually pretty nice. So let's go back in here. I'm going to go ahead and rename this, um, give it a reroute node. Um, I want to have a reroute node for my origins. So we're going to say uh, named readout node. This will be uh, this will be instance origin. And then this will be our our uh, visibility mask. Visibility mask, all right. Now, as I showed you earlier, um, I was able to get the grass to like fall down into the ground, which is something that Fortnite does uh, in their grass materials. So I wanna do that here. I wanna show you all that math. Um, it's also gonna be some math, so bear with me. Uh, but we're gonna get Basically the same thing here. We want to get the up vector, which is basically facing up. So we'll do this. And we also want to get our origin. So instance origin. 
and let's go ahead and subtract these two. So we get from origin to the up vector. That, we, that way we have a local transform. So uh, I'll call this after we normalize. This will, this will be the, um, let's go ahead and make a comment box. This will be the local up vector. I'll make it blue to indicate that it's up. Local up vector, all right, cool. What are we gonna do with this? Well, I want to offset the grass based off of this local up vector. And I also wanna offset it based off of this visibility mask. So visibility mask, I'm gonna one minus it because I'm just gonna multiply it. Um, when I want it to be invisible, I want it to go down. So I'm gonna invert it that way. Um, so we have our local up vector. We're going to multiply it by our visibility mask and then multiply that by the down distance. I also want to multiply this by the object scale, which does work per instance for whatever reason. So we'll use that. Multiply and then we'll multiply it by the Z since Z is the height. And then we'll put that into our world position offset. So since this is zero, it's not gonna do anything, but let's go ahead and um, save that and we can see what's gonna happen. Give this a second. Thankfully, we're no longer working with that monster of materials, so um, it's a lot faster to compile. All right, you'll notice I'm getting close. The opacity is still a thing, but I wanna increase this down distance. I think I need to make it negative to actually go downwards. Let's do like, oh yeah, actually it needs to go positive now. So yeah, let's do like 200. So you'll notice it's actually going down when it's um, getting out of render distance. And if I go to a hill, you'll also see it um, move towards the grounds, towards the normals of the grounds that um, that's present in. That's why we had to find the local up vector. That way it goes towards the, the normal in which it spawned on. Um, we also have object scale so that if we have larger blades of glass, of grass, sorry, um, they will um, adjust the same way um, based off of that scale. All right, that's cool. Now, the last thing I want to address is wind. Static grass is so boring. So why not just add some wind? Well, if we go into here, go to Epic, and then search for wind. You want to pull out a simple grass wind node. All right, so this should be the last world position offset node. After all of your other world position offsets, this is what goes into your world position offset. So we're going to put that in here. And then I'm going to have a parameter for wind intensity. And for now, I'm just going to say um, one for wind weight. Save that and let's see what happens. All right, let me pull this out. And then if I get close, nothing's happening. Let's turn up the wind intensity. And then boom, um, wind is going crazy. And the grass is going crazy too. Um, you'll also see that every single vertex on this grass. So it's going beneath the ground and everything. And that's maybe not what you want. Um, I wanna quickly point out that my grass has its pivot point at the very bottom of the blade. 
Um, and for that reason, I can do the following thing. When the pivot point is at the bottom, um, you can mask it like this. All right, so now I want to weight it based off of its height from the center, from the pivot point. So I'm going to take absolute world position. And I'm going to transform from world position to local position. So world space to um, local space. Let me just verify that. Yeah, that's what I did. All right. So we're going to mask by the B channel, which is the up channel. And then we can now create our gradient based off of that. So we're going to um, divide that. And this will be um, grass height. Basically saying, like, where does the wind affect, um, affect this grass? So I'll set this to, like, 200 to start with. And then we just put that into our weight down here. The weights and we'll save that and see what happens okay quick correction um you need to convert it to instance and particle space not local space i don't know why i did that um but once you do that then you'll notice that your grass looks good So the base is not going beneath, um, but the top is waving like crazy. And that's exactly what you want with the grass. Maybe it's not, but you can adjust it however you feel like. Um, but I think that's everything for this tutorial. So if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, and I'll see you in the next episode. So good luck creating.